Okay. We have something called station reports. Station reports. A station report is a point. I'll be using this notation SP. So a station report is a point at which the dy over dx equals zero. All right. A station point is where dy of dx equals zero. And we've got two types of station points. You can have a point of inflection. Or you can have a turning point. A turning point is a point where the gradient changes before and after the stationary point. I'll, I'll illustrate this in a second. Oh, I'll do it now, actually. So, for example, you might have something like this. And at this point, dy of dx, the gradient is zero. Now, before this point, the gradient is positive. After this point, the gradient is negative. And therefore, the gradient changes, and we'll say it's a, it's a turning point. And such a point is called a maximum point. Or you could have a point in which there's a dip and it's a minimum point. Again, at that point, our dy of dx equals zero. But before this point, the gradient is negative. Afterwards, it becomes positive, and therefore, the gradient, the sign of the gradient changes. Hence, it's a what they call a turning point. Now, a point of inflection is one where you have a stationary point, so you still have dy of dx equals zero. So it might be, say, at this point here, you still have dy of dx equals zero. Okay, I'll write SP just to say it's a stationary point. But before the stationary point, the gradient was positive, is positive, and afterwards it is still positive. Or here, before the gradient is negative, and afterwards it is still negative. Right, let's consider this cubic and we've been asked to find the stationary points and investigate their nature. By nature we mean is it inflection or is it a uh, maximum minimum point? That's what we have to establish. And then sketch the curve. In order to do this let's start by working out dy of dx. dy of dx is 3 take away 3x squared. But at the stationary point, because it's stationary, this has to equal zero. Okay, stationary point means the gradient is therefore zero. And then we can solve this. So we've got 3x squared equals 3, the 3 is cancel, and x equals plus or minus 1. Now, it says to find the station points. So have we completed the question so far? That part of the question. What, what else do we need? Sorry? The y values. Right. So, at 
x equals 1, y therefore equals 3 times 1, take away 1, which just gives us 2. And let's write that as a coordinate for the examiner, 1, 2. And similarly, at x equals minus 1, y gives us minus 2, so let's write that as a coordinate. Now we've found the coordinates of the stationary points. The question is, what is the nature of these two points? In order to answer this question, what we could do... Yeah, so what we could do is take points on either side. Uh, so let's draw a little table. So we've got minus 1, so here's our x value. We've got minus 1 and we've got 1. And we can normally take not an integer away, but a decimal away. So we can take 1.1 and 0 0.9 on, you know, just, just a very small amount away. That's all we really need. But for the sake of simplicity, let's take in some values on either side. So, so if we move, so, so you've got 0 here, let's put 2 over here and put minus 2 here. And then all we need to do is work out at those particular values, we just need to <coughs> know what dy of dx is going to be. We don't, know the, we don't need to know the exact value, although that would be good, but we just need to know whether it's going to be positive or negative. I'll give you a minute. Do you want to have a go at doing that? And then we'll go over it. All right. So what do you get for... Obviously, when, when you've got minus 1, what's your dy of dx equal to? Zero. zero. And similarly, when you've got 1, dy of dx is 0 again. When x equals 0, what do you get for dy of dx? Okay. Anyone got a particular value? Three. 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 Okay, we've got 3, and so it's positive. What about when you've got 2? Minus, minus 9. Minus 9, so therefore it's negative. And minus 2? You've got minus 9, and therefore it's negative. Okay. And so basically it goes from negative to positive, so it's going to do that. And overhead goes from positive to negative, so it's going to do that. And therefore we can conclude that minus 1 minus 2 has to be a minimum point. Whereas 1 minus 2 is a maxi point. Is that okay? Now, just a word of caution here, that in some scenarios, you might get a situation, and you can think about this, where if I do x plus 1, bracket, bracket, times x plus 2, bracket, bracket, if I had that situation, x plus 1, x plus 2, what, my, what are my roots going to be? Minus 1, minus 2. Okay? And obviously, if I move down an integer, if I'm exploring, then I move down an integer. Okay? Then. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, obviously, at that point, um, no, that wouldn't give you, that wouldn't be a problem because, yeah, it yeah, so that should be fine. But the point is that if you've got some sort of cubic where. Um, uh, the integer below it is in fact another point uh, or uh, or the sign changes because there's another root in between that integer then then you'll end up with, with a problem and so the best thing to do is actually not to take an integer value above and below but to take a very small decimal value like one point from one to <coughs> one point one and from one to zero point nine okay and that avoids so I doubt you'll get something like that, but it's the sort of thing you'll be investigating when you do your C3 coursework um, after your exams at the end of the year. Now, if we had to sketch this, what do we need to know? If you had to sketch this, what do you need to know? Okay, so, yeah, so if we put in x equals 0, what does y equal? If we put y equals 0, what do you get for x? Well, we know that. When you, when you put x equals 0 and you solve it, we should get root 3 minus root 3. When x equals 0, if you look at the equation, then y equals 0. 
So we've got those points, and we know also that the cubic, is it positive or negative? The AX cubed part of the cubic, AX cubed equals minus X cubed, A is less than zero, and therefore it's going to be this shape. So very similar to sketching quadratics. And we should have something like something like this. Okay. And there's our cubic. So we should have these points in. The points where it intersects the curves, the general shape, and in this case we can also emphasize the maximum minimum points. Is that okay so far? Yeah, thanks. That's well spotted. Uh, over here. So when x equals 0, y equals 0. And the other point that we need to know is when y equals 0, then um, which is 3x take away x cubed, then we just need to solve that. So obviously we can factorize it. So we've got the x out take away 3x squared. That equals 0. Therefore, we know that x equals 0 or x equals root 3, or x equals minus root 3. Okay, and therefore you have those three points. Minus 3, minus root 3, 0, and plus root 3. And you've got one, or 1, 2, minus 1. Is that all right so far? All right. To determine the nature of a stationary point, we can also use a second derivative method. So let's write this down. And I'll put down method two. This is probably, although I've written method two, this is going to be your primary method of establishing the nature of the stationary point. If this fails, then you would go and use the table. The second method works like this. Number one, find dy of dx, set it to zero, solve it, and work out your x values. And obviously your x values will give you your stationary point. Okay, so that gives you your stationary point. Number two, now to determine the nature, you find the second differential. So it's written as d squared y over d, dx squared. And if d squared y over dx squared is greater than 0, then it's going to be a minimum point. If d squared y over dx squared is less than 0, it's going to be a maximum point. If d squared y over dx squared equals 0, then we need to do further tests, and then you'd use the table method. Um, just, just a second. Uh, if yeah, so yeah, for with MEI, the sec the f d squared of the x squared equals zero, then you would do further tests. I think with Ed Excel. They do. They have this extra thing about working out um, the third differential or something. They have something that's uh, slightly different, which comes up. But that's basically what we're doing at MEI. Good question. Right. So with the f prime x notation, um, if I was to write the same thing down, I'd use red. So what we're saying is fx equals 0. Here we're saying f prime prime x is greater than 0. f prime prime x is less than 0. And f prime prime x equals 0. So that's using the fx notation, the function notation. Yeah, I haven't explained it yet. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you in a second.
let's go back and look at our function 3x, the one we've just done. Let's do example. So say we've got y equals 3x take away x cubed. And we want to find uh, the stationary points and determine the nature. Well, we know what dy of dx is 3 take away 3x squared. We set that to 0. And therefore, x equals 1 or x equals minus 1. And we've established that the stationary points are minus 1, minus 2. Now to determine the nature. We then differentiate again. We take the second differential. Notice the 2 on the numerator is not on the y, it's on the d. But in the denominator, the 2 lies on dx. And that's partly to do with the fact that this is an operator. So it's probably a discussion I'm willing to have, but not quite right now. Let's just leave that for another day. So you've got d squared y over dx squared. And we differentiate there. So th when you differentiate 3, what do you get? Zero. Zero. Differentiate minus 3x squared gives us minus, six. minus 6x. Now, when x equals 1, d squared y over dx squared equals minus 6 times 1, which is minus 6, i.e. this is less than 0, therefore it's going to be a maximum point. And also, at x equals minus 1, d squared y over dx squared is going to be minus 6 times minus 1, which equals 6. That's greater than 0, therefore, a minimum point. And that agrees, when x equals 1, we did have a minimum. When x equals, so when x equals 1, we had a maximum. When x equals minus 1, we had, in fact, a minimum.